फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल निकल हाइड्रोजन निकल एक्ट एस रिड्यूसिंग एजेंट एंड सप्लाईज हाइड्रोजन टू द रिएक्टेंट्स इट मेनली एक्ट ऑन टू प्लेसेस नंबर वन एट पाई बॉन्ड नंबर टू एट हेलोजन लेट्स कंसिडर एट पाई बॉन्ड For each pi bond, nickel supplies two hydrogen. Splitting of pi bond result in addition of hydrogen to the atom attached to pi bond. And in this way, we get saturated compound. So the reaction involve addition of hydrogen. So it is a addition reaction. or also called as reduction or hydrogenation reaction second function of nickel hydrogen is replacement of halogen by hydrogen for each halogen nickel use two hydrogen splitting of halogen takes place as hcl and remaining hydrogen occupy the place of halogen to form saturated compound so this is a substitution reaction means replacement reaction replacement of halogen by hydrogen second reagent is magnesium in dry ether followed by hydrolysis magnesium reacts with alkyl halide as it form r mgcl that is alkyl magnesium chloride which is also called as a grignard reagent on reaction with water splitting takes place as hydrogen goes to alkyl group to form alkene next reagent is sodium in dry ether and the reaction is called as wurtz reaction in this reaction two molecules of similar alkyl halide reacts together in presence of sodium sodium abstract halogen from alkyl halides as and form nacl the remaining alkyl part combines together to form alkene so this reaction result in formation of hydrocarbon with double the number of carbon atom as compared to reactant for example if we have reactant of one carbon that is chloromethane the product will be of double the carbon that is two carbon reaction takes place as two molecules of chloromethane with sodium splitting of bonds and the alkyl groups combines together to form alkene so wurtz reaction involve reaction between two molecules of alkyl halides fitting reaction now this reaction is similar to wurtz reaction but the only difference is that it involve use of aryl halides two molecules of aryl halides reacts with sodium in presence of dry ether result in the formation of removal of sodium halide both benzene ring 
combines together to form biphenyl. So if we use aryl halide, the reaction is phytic and if we use alkyl halide, then the reaction is Wurtz reaction. Now the next reaction is Wurtz phytic reaction. As the name is suggesting, the reaction is a combination of Wurtz reaction and phytic reaction, hence involve the reaction between one molecule of alkyl halide and another molecule of aryl halide. In presence of sodium, in dry ether, splitting of bonds are alkyl part and aryl parts combined together to form aromatic hydrocarbon which is also called as toline. Intramolecular Wurtz reaction. Intramolecular Wurtz reaction involve use of alkyl dihalide. Now one molecule of alkyl dihalide reacts with sodium result in the formation of sodium halide splitting of bonds are the two carbons combine together to form cycloalkane. So intramolecular Wurtz reaction involve formation of cyclic hydrocarbons. Properties of alkane, first of all oxidation or combustion. Alkanes undergo oxidation in following three method. Number one, complete oxidation which converts alkane into carbon dioxide and water. Second, incomplete oxidation which converts alkane into carbon monoxide and water. And the third one is catalytic oxidation which give different products with different catalysts. For example, in copper tube at 100 atmospheric pressure, methane on oxidation gave methanol. Similarly, with manganese oxide at high pressure, under these conditions, methane gave methanol. So, alkane gave different product on different catalytic oxidation. Action of KMnO4 KMnO4 generally reacts on pi bond or on aromatic compound. So, alkanes do not react with KMnO4 due to absence of pi bond or due to presence of strong sigma bond in alkanes. Only those alkanes which possess tertiary hydrogen undergo oxidation in presence of KMnO4 to form alcohol. For example, in this molecule we have one carbon as tertiary carbon and hydrogen attached to this carbon is tertiary hydrogen. So on reaction with KMnO4, the reactant give alcohol. So incorporation of oxygen between carbon and hydrogen result in the formation of alcohol. So only those alkanes which possess tertiary hydrogen reacts with KMnO4. Reaction with silver oxide. 
function of silver oxide is to oxidize one methyl group to carboxylic group. For example, if you have alkyl group and CH3 on reaction with Ag2O, it form carboxylic acid. Isomerization or action of anhydrous AlCl3 on alkanes. Normal alkane form isoalkane and isoalkane form neoalkane. For example, if we have normal butane or N butane on reaction with anhydrous AlCl3 normal compound form iso compound that is isobutane if the reactant is iso compound for example isopentane then iso compound form neo compound that is neopentane so n alkane form isoalkane which form neoalkane if anhydrous AlCl3 is present in excess, then N alkane directly form neoalkane. Aromatization In this reaction, aliphatic compound form aromatic compound in presence of metal oxides. For example, hexane when reacts or heated in presence of metal oxides reaction involve removal of hydrogen that is oxidation or dehydrogenation removal of hydrogen form sigma bond that is cyclization so this cycloalkane or cyclohexane on further heating with metal oxide form benzene. Splitting of bonds are removal of neighboring hydrogen form pi bond. Similarly, other hydrogens are removed to form pi bond and so on. So in this manner, we get benzene as end product. So, aliphatic compound is converted into aromatic compound, that is why the reaction is aromatization. Koff's rule. First of all, let us understand symmetry in a molecule. With respect to alkene, we can say that alkenes are of two types symmetrical and unsymmetrical alkene. Symmetrical alkenes are those alkenes which can be divided into two identical halves. For example, first half and second half. Both are identical. Similarly, in case of but to in, first half and second half both are identical. Unsymmetrical alkenes do not possess identical half. For example, first half is different from other half. Similarly, in but one in, one half is different from remaining half. In the same manner, symmetrical reagent is that reagent which can be divided into to identical half an unsymmetrical reagent cannot be divided into identical halves first rule for addition reaction is Markonikov's rule it states that addition of unsymmetrical reagent to unsymmetrical alkene 
takes place in such a way so that negative part of adding agent goes to that carbon of multiple bond to which less number of hydrogens are attached for example if we have alkene propene and adding agent is hcl in case of adding agent the right hand side part is negative and left hand side part is positive always remember markovnikov rule and anti markovnikov rule are applicable only when both alkene as well as adding agent are unsymmetrical splitting of pi bond takes place negative part of adding agent goes to that carbon which possess less hydrogen and positive part of adding agent to remaining carbon to form 2 chloro propane similarly for the addition of water splitting of pi bond takes place remember student pi bond should be splitted in such a manner that that from less hydrogen to more hydrogen splitting of pi bond should takes place from less hydrogen carbon to more hydrogen carbon negative part of adding agent goes to that carbon which possess less hydrogen and remaining part on other hydrogen to form alcohol that is propane to all or isopropyl alcohol or secondary propyl alcohol mechanisms for markovnikov addition first step of mechanism is splitting of adding agent for example hbr splitted as h positive br negative then on alkene positively charged part attacks so this reaction is electrophilic addition reaction splitting of pi bond takes place from less hydrogen to more hydrogen now positively charged electrophile h positive goes to ch2 group resulting in the formation of carbocation now remaining anion br negative attacks on positively charged carbon to form product so main characteristic of markovnikov addition is that number 1 reaction takes place by heterolytic bond fission number 2 it is electrophilic addition reaction and number 3 this reaction involve formation of carbocation intermediate second rule for addition reaction is anti markovnikov's rule anti markovnikov's rule states that addition of unsymmetrical reagent to unsymmetrical alkene takes place in such a way so that negative part of adding agent goes to that carbon of multiple bond to which more number of hydrogens are attached so it is opposite to markovnikov's rule always understand anti markovnikov rule is applicable only in one case that is addition of hbr in presence of peroxide so that is why this effect is also called as peroxide effect or kharash effect reaction can be represented as addition of hbr in presence of peroxide
splitting of bond takes place by homolytic bond fission negative part goes to that carbon which possess more number of hydrogen and positive part on other carbon to form one bromo propane all other reaction involve marconic of addition whereas only the addition of hbr in presence of peroxide on unsymmetrical alkene follows anti markovnikov's rule or peroxide effect let's understand the mechanism the reaction is so first step is splitting of peroxide for generation of free radical splitting of peroxide for generation of alkyl free radical this alkyl free radical attacks on hbr for generation of bromine free radical bromine free radical attacks on alkene by homolytic bond fission to form other free radical intermediate hbr again generate hydrogen free radical to form final product so the main characteristic of this reaction is number 1 it takes place in presence of organic peroxide number 2 it is a free radical addition reaction number 3 it result in formation of free radical intermediate so now the main question is why peroxide effect is observed only in case of hbr not in case of hf hcl and hi so it can be understand with the help of thermodynamics as we can see in table first step of free radical addition reaction is the addition of x free radical that is halogen in second step addition of hydrogen free radical always remember only that reaction is possible for which delta g is negative if delta g is not given then delta h should be negative so we can understand this question by the help of spontaneity for fluorine we can understand first step possess negative value of delta h where a second step possess positive value so first step is spontaneous but second is non spontaneous in case of chlorine first step is spontaneous second is non spontaneous whereas only in case of bromine both step possess negative value of delta h and both the steps are spontaneous in case of iodine first step is non spontaneous so we can say because of delta h negative for both the steps overall delta g is also negative hence the hence the reaction of hbr is spontaneous following are the reagents used for allylic substitution allylic substitution means substitution of allylic hydrogen by halogen but for competitive examination always remember all these reagent results in substitution of allylic hydrogen and tertiary hydrogen by halogen Cl2 at 773 Kelvin and SO2 Cl2 that is sulfuryl chloride result in chlorination 
and Br2773 Kelvin and NBS result in bromination. Allylic substitution means replacement of allylic hydrogen by halogen. Carbon next to the double bond is called as allylic carbon and hydrogen attached to this carbon is called as allylic hydrogen. This reactant can be represented as now this separated hydrogen is allylic hydrogen. So all these reagent replaces this hydrogen by halogen. Halogen can be chlorine or bromine. So let's understand their reaction one by one. First of all, chlorination. Cl2 at 773 Kelvin, reaction takes place as allylic hydrogen from alkene and halogen from Cl2 separates as HCl. The remaining halogen occupy the position of allylic hydrogen to give allyl chloride. SO2Cl2 that is sulfuryl chloride. Reaction takes place as allylic hydrogen and chlorine separates as HCl. SO2 separates as sulfur dioxide and remaining chlorine occupies the position of allylic hydrogen. Out of these two methods, the method of SO2Cl2 is preferable because the byproduct formed during this reaction that is HCl and SO2 are gaseous and are removed from reaction mixture by evaporation. Hence, we get pure allyl halide. Bromination that is replacement of allylic hydrogen by bromine. First reagent is Br2 at 773 Kelvin. Reaction takes place in similar manner as that of Cl2 773 Kelvin. Cl2 773 Kelvin. That is Cl2 773 Kelvin. That is allylic hydrogen and bromine separates as HBr and remaining bromine occupies the position of allylic hydrogen to give allyl bromide. Next reagent is NBS that is N bromo succini imide. The function of this reagent is same that is replacement of allylic hydrogen by bromine. So you can directly write the reaction of NBS. So we get allyl bromide. Out of these two reagent, we prefer NBS because it is better yielding method for bromination at allylic position. The other function of NBS are allylic substitution on alkene as well as acid chloride. For example, in this reaction, NBS replaces allylic hydrogen by bromine. So, allylic substitution on alkene. In the second reaction, NBS also reacts on acid chloride and replaces alpha hydrogen that is 
carbon next to the functional group is called as alpha carbon and its hydrogen are called as alpha hydrogen. So NBS replaces alpha hydrogen of acid chloride by bromine. So these are the two functions of NBS for your competitive examinations.